Nvidia has made bold claims, both at the launch of their new Turing or RTX graphics cards and during CES 2019, about the improved Invink performance and quality. That is their GPU based video encoder that has become a huge hit among game streamers due to the benefits of streaming and recording gameplay without taking a performance hit due to CPU encoding with X264. Prior to this new 20 series of cards, the trade-off has always been that the graphics card would record or stream with significantly less performance hit than the default X264 encoder, but at a lower quality for streaming bit rates. I've received numerous requests to check this out and see if they live up to the hype, and Nvidia was confident enough in this improvement that they actually sent me out a RTX 2080 graphics card for me to test for myself. Yeah, me. Crazy stuff. Anyway, the short answer is yes, but let's look a little closer. Let's get some housekeeping out of the way first. My testing was done with a beta of a new build of OBS Studio. Nvidia has partnered with OBS's creator to completely rework how GPU encoding functionality works to save on resources, and a new Invink API was made accessible as well. Previously, frames had to be copied to the system memory, then sent back to the GPU for encoding with Invink or whatever. Now the frames stay within the GPU, which keeps CPU usage even lower. I've been using a beta build of this version for my testing. My test system has an Intel Core i7-8700K at 4.7 GHz, 16 gigs of RAM at 3000 MHz, and a Founders Edition NVIDIA RTX 2080. Captures were done from a base Xbox One to an Epifan AVIO HD capture card at 1080p 60fps, and a PlayStation 4 Pro running at 4K downscaled to 1080p with a Magewell USB 4K HDMI Plus capture card for good measure. I'm not showing the Xbox captures here because I had some issues with them, but most of the, the they reflected what I had, but in terms of, I had some fray rate issues that were on my end. I did some testing and comparisons between Invink and X264 at very fast, fast, and medium CPU usage presets. Invink was set to max quality, high profile, with psycho visual tuning on and look ahead off. These are some things in the new build. And then B frames left at two. On the previous generation of cards, Pascal or 10 series, Invink was considered to be on par with X264's very fast CPU usage preset. These presets are basically how intensely they use your processor to encode the footage. This ranges from ultra fast all the way down to very slow and placebo. The faster the preset, the easier and quicker it is for your processor to encode the footage and spit it back out, but the lower quality the final encoding would be. Quality artifacts result in blurriness, graininess, uh, macro blocking, or squares in the image, and so on. There are more factors that go into resource load, such as the decode mode of your capture card, or if you're using game capture locally, etc. But that's, that's the general idea. Typically, the lowest it's worth going to in the usage presets is medium, which typically requires a separate streaming PC to offload encoding onto. Medium is the preset that people tend to want to achieve to make their Twitch streams look the best, and thus is the standard that I'm benchmarking against. And by the way, all of my upscaling tests were done in After Effects because After Effects has a much um, higher accuracy scaler than Premiere does, and Premiere does, has some issues with how they scale footage, and all of this is running through YouTube compression anyway, so I'll have some notes at the end about how you can check this out better for yourself. While previous generations of cards may have only matched the very fast X264 preset encoding, I'm happy to report that in my testing, the new Invink on the 2080 traded blows in terms of quality reproduction with the X264's medium encoder. This is super nitpicky testing at this point, but in many frames, Invink has a cleaner image, more detail preserved, and in some odd takes more saturation of colors than X264. It's not perfect, and there's a million use cases for encoding, and your mileage may vary. But thus far, I've been quite impressed. I compared very fast, fast, and medium, and I did it at 3500 bitrate, 6K bitrate, which is the max officially supported for Twitch, and then at 8K bitrate, which is, you, you can technically push to Twitch, but you may have issues with it. And the results kind of matched at all different bitrates. A situation where medium X264 actually does kind of overtake uh, Invink is at lower, especially at lower bit rates in the really, really dark shadowy areas, X264 on medium uh, kind of looks a little bit better. But in plenty of other cases, Invink looks better or the same, and at faster X264 presets, Invink is really just catching up and passing it up by a long shot in some situations. Just those shadows 
on medium or versus medium at lower bit rates they're a little tough I've always felt like chasing the last extra 1% of image quality on stream was an absurd and expensive rabbit hole to go down with multi-PC setups and buying processors way more powerful than you need, but having finally streamed with a few times with Medium last year, I, I, I do kind of get it to a degree, especially you know if you like image quality. If you're worried about getting that extra level of stream quality too, at this point InVink is a perfectly reasonable solution at this point. You get a nice quality and performance boost, and Turing's Invink can even do 8K 30fps too, by the way, however, that doesn't work on OBS yet. And they've contributed to a massive change and rework of OBS's graphics framework. It's a good time for streamers. I did want to note that the OBS rework will apply pretty much from 7th generation GeForce cards all the way up to the 20 series in terms of performance boosts and taking advantage of the new features, however the actual quality increase only applies to the 20 series, the RTX or Turing cards, because those actually have physically different InVink chips on the cards. Thanks to the wonderful contributors to our Patreon donor box, I've set up a few alternatives, all of you fan funders as some people call them, I will have the original recordings for these tests shown here that you can download for yourself, as running them YouTube, through YouTube compression kind of destroys the representative accuracy a bit. If you want to buy a NVIDIA graphics card for your own streaming rig, I'll have an affiliate product links in the description down below. While you're down there, hit the like button, subscribe for more tech education, who knows, maybe, maybe I'll get to recover more NVIDIA cards in the future. I, I didn't think I'd get to check out this one, so we'll have to see. I'm Fox, and I'll see you next time.